let me tell you what we're not doing. This is not about Armageddon, bomb shelter, get a bunch of guns and ammo, and, and a whole, you know, whole. This is about just basic preparedness. If there's a hurricane, we want you to know how to weather the storm. If you don't have power, it's a, we want you to know how to deal with that. That's what you know tonight is is about. It's about basic preparedness. The guard need to think about people who want to take. The next step, not just to be prepared in an emergency, but maybe to start being self-sustaining in some in some way. All right. So why don't we begin with uh, opening prayer? Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you very much. Now, it's a good comment during the prayer about sharing ideas. If you've got a question, raise your hand. If you don't understand the answer, just keep asking until you understand. We want people to go out here knowing enough about the information that they set it up. And the thing I always you know, say about Joe, and he doesn't mind me saying this about him, right, is that he's not any smarter than you are, right? Is that he just learned how to, he just set up, he, he decided one day, well, maybe smarter than you are, but not that <laughs> else, right? So, so, so one day, he said, you know what, I'm going to figure out how to do this. And he just learned it. He just started going online and doing whatever, I don't know, he can tell you did. But he just started figuring out how to do it, and he's just self-taught, and he's, he, he's looked at all the resources. He can tell you which resources are good, which resources are not worth your time. Is that, but he's really become kind of a self-taught master of emergency preparedness. So with no further ado, I introduce... The king of emergency preparedness. All right. That's oh, then that wasn't good enough. He is the king. All right, that's enough. So, welcome everybody. Uh, we're glad that you're here. We're going to cover the basics of water storage, filtration, and purification tonight. Hopefully, we get some good uh, good thoughts out of this. Uh, again, I just want to reiterate: if you got a question. Don't wait. Don't wait till the end. Let's talk about it right now. If I've got some things you think are wrong, let's talk about those two. Uh, in the back is David Barr. He always has a couple things he disagrees with me on, and I'm just fine with that. It's not going to hurt my feelings, and we can talk about it. Uh, water is a, obviously a very important thing, and living in Houston, you think, we got tons of water. It rains here all the time. We've got, we got creeks, rivers, ponds. Water's not as much of an issue here as it is, say, out in the southwest where I'm from, out in Phoenix. But the problem is, is getting clean water that you can actually consume in an emergency situation. And that's what we're going to talk about today, is different methods that will allow you to have access to water that you can consume that is safe for you to drink. And that's the focus of tonight's uh, presentation. So, uh, water. The general rule of thumb with water is that you need, uh, excuse me, you can live with three days without water. It's not very long. So if you have a situation where you can't get to clean water, you're going to last about three days, you're probably going to die. No, no, not like food where you can go on for weeks and weeks on a bare minimum ration. You have to be able to hydrate your body. Specifically in this area, if it's a hurricane season, it's going to be hot and humid. You're going to have an even worse time of it if you can't get water in your body. You're going to be essentially uh, worthless and helpless and relying on someone else to provide for your needs. So that's why we really focus on this is because in a hurricane situation, you could actually lose water at your house. Now, it's not likely actually anymore. After, I believe it was Hurricane Rita, they passed a whole bunch of new laws for municipal utility districts that require them to have natural gas fire generators that will run their water plants and keep water on. Nevertheless, if something breaks down, you're still going to be in trouble. So we're still going to cover these things and their importance. Uh, rule of thumb for water is if, if you're in your family, if you want to prepare, you should have one gallon per person per day. That's a bare minimum to sustain life. You think, I don't drink a gallon of water a day. What's that all about? Well, you've got sanitation issues, especially if it's hot and humid, you're going to have some sanitation issues. You need to wash dishes, keep yourselves clean, your bodies clean. You're going to have problems that arise with kids or other people in the family that you're going to have to take care of. See? <laughs> Baby agrees right there. And uh, so if you, want to, you want to plan ahead with one gallon per person per day as part of your water storage program. Now, I'm, I'm a big advocate of the 55-gallon barrel. This is one right here. This is a food-grade barrel that I got uh, on Craigslist for about 25 bucks. And it, in, in this one particularly before, it had barbecue sauce. It was actually used to transport barbecue sauce to some plant or something that processed food and put barbecue sauce in it. And the first couple of times I put water in this, it tasted like barbecue when I, when I drank it out. 
And so, you know, it took a few cycles of water to get it to where it didn't taste that way anymore. I also have ones that tasted like Dr. Pepper and Sprite. <laughs> I prefer those substantially to the, to the barbecue tasting water. The point is, though, that they're food grade, and, they, uh, and so they're safe for you to use. Now, in these exact same type of barrels, by the way, they call them blue and white. And get the blue because blue lasts in the sun if you're leaving your barrels outside. The white ones will rot out in a period of about three or four years. They'll rot and they'll break. So blue lasts a long time. But uh, these same exact barrels are also used to transport chemicals and paints. So if you're going to go buy these things on Craigslist, you need to make sure you get ones that have transported food and not chemicals. You should never try and clean the chemicals or the paint out of one of these things and use it again. It could be unsafe and it could leach stuff into your water that could be very unhealthy for you. So that's something that's very important. If you're not sure what was in it before, stick your nose in the hole and take a big whiff. I guarantee you'll figure it out because <laughs> they haven't generally been cleaned very well when you first get them. Uh, once you have one of these 50 gallon barrels, you should, my, my rule of thumb that I say is you should have one barrel per person in your family. They're 55 gallons, so that actually would provide you with more than a one month supply of water per person in your home. It's an excellent rule of thumb. I actually have like 12 of them, and I have six people in my family. I push it a little bit further, just basically because I found some on sale, and so I fill them up and stuck them in my backyard. But you can stick these things in the sun for quite a long period of time, and they'll last really well. The blue ones will. I've had a few white ones. They've all failed on me within just a few years. If you want to make them last longer, you can stick a tarp on top of them with a couple of bricks, and they'll last even longer that way. Um, even the blue ones? Even the blue ones. It can't hurt, right? You're just, you're, all you're doing is preventing UV rays from breaking down the plastic and causing it to get brittle and, and leaching your water. So once you have this big, huge barrel, what do you do with it, right? So you, when you very first get a barrel, the first thing you need to do is you open it up and take a look. Now this right here is called the bone wrench. And it's in the very back of your pamphlet. You'll see it, it's listed there. And I think I have a, a, a place you can buy it. Probably Amazon.com. I think it's like 12 bucks for this thing. This is the very bottom of the back, back, back page. But it's got these handy dandy little prongs. Bone wrench. You stick right in the lid here and you turn it and it pulls the lid right off. Now the lids don't last as long as the barrel. You can see this one's starting to be pretty wet. This has been in my backyard for four years. And it's starting to get wet. I'm going to need to replace this one pretty soon. But the barrel's in perfect shape. You look inside. Take a sniff at it, see what, what it, it smells bad, then there's a problem, right? If it doesn't smell bad, it smells like Sprite, you're probably good to go. Uh, and then you got to get, you need to make sure that there's not junk and gunk on the sides. If there is, you need to take some time and clean the barrel. How do you clean the barrel? If you have a power washer, you're golden. If you don't have a power washer and you can't find one, then you got to use the hose method. The hose method is you fill it up with about 5 or 10 gallons of water, Dump a ton of bleach in it, maybe about four, somewhere between four cups and a half gallon, anywhere in that range, just a ton is, is basically the rule of thumb, just a ton of bleach. Close it all up nicely, kick it onto the ground, and roll it around your yard for a while. Get that bleach solution all coated over the inside of this thing. Then just let it sit for a couple days. And let that bleach work and kill all the organisms that might be in there. Once that's done, empty it out. Spray the water inside as much as you can. If there's still stuff on the side, you may have to just fill it all the way up put a couple cups of bleach in it and let it sit for six months. So you're not going to have usable water for the first period of time. But after that process, it should have all cleaned itself off, and then you can have water that you put back in that you can use once again. That's the 55-gallon barrel. Now, how are we, go ahead. If you buy the barrels new, you still have to go through the same process? No, if you buy them brand new, you do not need to clean them. No. If it was me, I'd fill them up partway with water and just roll around a little bit just to make sure there's no plastic particles in there, and you're good to go. And if there should... You can get these things online. What does the handout say for brand new ones? 50 bucks a piece? Yeah. 55, 80 bucks a piece plus shipping. So they're quite a bit more expensive. But um, the used ones, I haven't had any problem with them so far. So. Yes, please. You can. Do you know what channel locks are? They're the, they're the, the pliers that kind of have an angle and they have an expandable jaw. You can, you, can, you can get them on there just barely enough, but if it's on there really tight, it's, it's just a little bit too small to, to do it. So you, the bun wrench really is helpful to have, yeah. And it's $8. I think it's worth $8. Yeah. Good <laughs> point. Yeah, yeah. Now, how do you get the water out of these things? There are folks who actually figure out a way to tap into the bottom and put a little hose bib on there and everything. But the simplest way is to get a cheap pump. Remember, this is something you're not going to be using all the time, so cheap's probably going to be okay. 
This is the cheapest pump you can find out there. It's about 20 bucks on Amazon. It's pretty simple. It just goes like this. You pump, 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 pump. And if you pump really hard, you can get about five gallons uh, out of it in a minute, which is pretty good flow rate. Uh, it's a decent pump. It's, it screws into the top, and you can use it to get the water out. If you want to go with a little bit more expensive option, just search for 55-gallon drum pump on Amazon, and it will come up with as, as expensive as options as you want. This one right here is about a $40 option. Same idea. It's a little pump. It has more tubes that go in. I just didn't put it all together. And you just pump it up and down, and it self-primes, sucks the water up in, and then you can get it out of your 55-gallon barrel. That How way. much was the other one? The first one was 20 bucks. This one's about 40 bucks. And, and you can all, get them. I'm sorry. They're all that? called water pumps. They're all called water pumps. Okay. Yep. Yeah. If you just if you just search 55 gallon drum water pump or just pump, these will pop up. And there's there's so many different kinds and varieties and speeds. Yes. Have you had them with the this, the faucet on the bottom? Have you ever had them? I I never have done that. No, but it's easy to do if you want if you want to put a faucet on the bottom. All you got to do is go down to the Home Depot and buy one of those hose bibs, you know, just like the things you have on the side of your house, and you just figure out the right, the same size hole, get a couple of washers, drill a hole in it, put the washers in, and screw it on. The problem is going to be that you can't reach your hand under there on the inside, and so you're going to have to make that hole really, 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 really tight and probably use some silicone on it as you screw it in. It's not a great option, frankly. People do it. I don't do it. I don't mean to back up, but how much bleach, this new barrel, how much bleach was in the water? Uh, when you fill these things up, you should put about a half a cup of bleach. Okay. And that, uh -huh. So we have some, we've had some discussion on this in the past, but my recommendation is that you put a half a cup of bleach per 55-gallon barrel in, and then you rotate your water once per year. So you take it once a year, you dump it out, and you refill it, put another half a cup of bleach in. And that should keep your water fresh and pure without any organisms or anything else growing in it. And, uh, I don't know if now's the time you want to talk about. Sure. About, yeah. yeah last we had some discussion about this last. last month. I, I'm man enough. If I'm wrong, you know, I'll I'll man up to it. So last month I said you never need it to to rotate your water if you get it from a from the from the a potable water source. So if you get city water in it, um, so I'm going to bring a 55 gallon drum with my water in it until you know it's 450 pounds. It didn't go very far. All right, about. 16 inches. And so we opened it up. I videotaped this. It's on my YouTube channel. LDS Prepper. Right yeah, on LDS YouTube. Prepper. Yep. And, and uh, we didn't know what to expect when we opened it up. Okay. This has been sitting on the concrete in my garage for five years. Came out of the garden hose. All right. No special hose. No, no chlorine. Um, no additives by No me. additives. It's got polywogs. Okay, <laughs> and, and this is what we got. Let me see if I can pour this in here. Uh -oh. David, why don't you put that picture on the lid? Looks pure and clean to me. There you go. Okay, so I had my daughter-in-law taste it, and she said it tasted like... Why you don't? Plastic. Tastes like, tastes <laughs> like, it's like it's a barrel. Water. Tastes like plastic. Okay. Yeah. It did is it, taste bad. Is it drinkable? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So five years old. Nothing's in it. Nothing's <laughs> added. Right from the garden hose. Okay. On concrete. <laughs> <laughs> and this morning. How long ago was the fish drink? Yeah. Yeah. She's still alive. Yeah. Yeah. She's still alive. Yeah. She's still alive. Yeah. 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 And she said, I said, well, it's drinkable. And she said, yeah, we'll find out in 30 minutes. So that was seven hours ago. We're still here. But anyway, so there's the other you know, side of the coin. Yeah. But what I do say on the video is, if you don't like the taste of plastic, dump the water out and put new water in. You know, if you got barbecue-flavored water, you may want to rotate it a couple times to get the, get the water out. But as you can see, there's no green stuff, no algae, no slime, no you put no bleach in that nope. or anything. No, came straight. Straight out of the garden hose. That's all that was in it. Okay? Yeah. So I maintain it's good. You it's choose. Good you enough for me, but if you want good, you know, fresh. And it wasn't flat. I thought it was going to be flat. Yeah. yeah. But, nope. Did you use one the regular garden hose, or did you get one of the white garden hose? The white one isn't a, the white one isn't a garden hose. I know. I used a garden hose. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's no such thing as red licorice. 
<laughs> All right? That's true. There is no. I didn't use a garden hose. No, I didn't use the white water RV hose. RV is what used, you're talking about. All right. Thank you very much. So just choose your own adventure here a little bit with these things, right? you got to figure out what you're comfortable with and what you want. If you're more concerned about having bleach in your water and the health effects of that, then do it the way David does. If you're more concerned about making sure that there's nothing in there, which is my position, then do it my way. Either way, you're probably not going to die and you're going to have water to drink. And that's the important part. Please. So the way I prefer to do it is like David, except for if I come to the point where I need to use it, mm -hmm. I would then put my Clorox in it. Okay. Because then I would know that I was not double Cloroxing me. Okay. But I would be, since I knew I just yeah. added it, I would be good. So that's another way to do it. You add, you add the, it's, it's eight drops per gallon. You can add Clorox in, or basically a, a tablespoon or a teaspoon for five gallons. I can't remember. Is it a teaspoon for five gallons? I can never remember that one. You put it in, you let it sit for a half hour, and you're good to go. So you can do it either way. All right, what's that? Lots of Kool Aid. Lots of Kool Aid, exactly. Tang makes everything taste better. All right. Yes. Think about you know, David is one of here. Part of the issue is depends on where you live, where you get your water from. City, you have water, then there's probably chlorine, already being chemical, it's already, it's already treated, right? So yeah. when it goes into your barrel, if you're on a well or, you know, if, if you don't have it, if it's coming out of the ground, you may want to think about it differently. So, so you just got to think about what your source of water is. That's a good point. Yes, please. And you also want to make sure that you just use straight bleach, no lemon lime right. taste. That's a very good point. Do not use scented bleach. You just want to use plain, old Clorox. No lemon flavored, whatever, you know, no fresh scent flavored. That's right, just plain Clorox bleach. Another thing to remember is if you're going to save bleach in order to purify water, that your bleach is only good, it loses about half of its value every year. So you do need to circulate through bleach if you want to save bleach for water purification. And by the way, that is a great idea. Saving and having an extra gallon of bleach in your laundry room. So if you had to, you could purify water for your family if you had a source of water that was a little bit nasty, but you really needed to get some water. So I totally went beyond my, went out of order on this. So I'm going to try and bring us back to, back to the, the uh, handout here. A couple points. 